Hi there, it's me again. You might remember me from the previous module. And no worries if not. What's important is that I'm here now. We've made some updates to this program to make sure you got the latest info on mobile devices. You'll see me again throughout the rest of this program, so keep your eyes peeled for me. And let's talk about mobile devices. Mobile devices are computers too. They have CPUs, RAM, storage, power systems, and peripherals. How are they different from a server, a desktop computer, or a laptop? They're special because they're, well, mobile. They're portable and usually powered by batteries. Some mobile devices are general purpose computing devices like tablets or smartphones. Other mobile devices are optimized to perform a specific set of tasks like fitness monitors, e-readers, and smartwatches. Mobile devices are usually very integrated. Remember the systems that we showed you earlier? The components could be taken out and held in your hand. Mobile devices build some or all of these components together in a way that you can't take apart. The smaller the device, the more integrated the components usually are. The CPU, RAM, and storage might be soldered directly to the device's motherboard. Very small mobile devices use a system on a chip, or SOC. A system on a chip packs the CPU, RAM, and sometimes even the storage onto a single chip. Not only are SOCs small, they use less battery power than if those components were separated. Even though they're small, some mobile devices use peripherals. Smartphones connect to Bluetooth headphones, for example. Mobile devices can also be a peripheral. A fitness tracker is a standalone device, but it can also be a peripheral to your smartphone. And that same fitness tracker might use a heart rate monitor as a peripheral. It's peripherals all the way down. Mobile devices may use standard or proprietary ports and connectors. You might need to have a specific adapter or connector for charging a device or connecting your mobile device to a computer. Sometimes the physical shape or the intended use of the mobile device makes a standard connection like USB a bad choice. For example, say you have a waterproof fitness tracker. If it had a micro USB port, that port would be damaged if exposed to water. So instead, it's designed with a custom charging interface that can be submerged underwater. Here are some of the standard power, data, and display connector types you'll find used in mobile devices. This is a USB-C. Next, we have a lightning adapter, then a mini USB, and a micro USB, a micro HDMI, and a mini HDMI, and this is a mini display port. Because mobile devices are generally small and have limited access to power, they run operating systems and application software that's specifically designed to maximize their performance. We'll dive into mobile operating systems and applications in future videos. As an IT support specialist, you might be responsible for helping end users with their mobile devices. This might include setup, troubleshooting, repairing, and replacing mobile devices. Don't worry, we're gonna break all of this down for you. One super important thing, mobile devices can contain a lot of personal data. Some organizations allow people to use their own personal devices for work. We call this bring your own device or BYOD. You should be careful to respect people's privacy when they bring their own devices to you for help. To know how to handle these devices, it's always best to refer to your organization's policy. Next up, we'll take a look at how to keep these mobile devices running without being plugged into a power outlet all the time.